Welcome to Imperium Archives, where we explore the intricate lore, politics, and power dynamics of Frank Herbert's legendary universe. I'm Rowan, and today, we explore the life of Leto Atreides. Amidst the shifting sands of Iraqis, where whispers of prophecy mingle with the harsh desert winds, the saga of House Atreides unfolds. The house traces its lineage to the storied halls of ancient Greece, where the legendary kings of Mycenae ruled with the strength of gods. From Atreus, king of Mycenae, to the valiant heroes of myth, the blood of Atreides flows with the pride of ancestry. However, it was amidst the chaos of the Butlerian Jihad, where humanity waged war against the tyranny of artificial intelligence that House Atreides emerged as a stalwart bastion of resistance, led by luminaries such as Vorian Atreides, whose valorous deeds turned the tide of war against the tyranny of thinking machines. Leto's story began in the opulent halls of Caledon, a tranquil planet of lush forests and crystalline waters. As the son of Duke Paulus Atreides and Lady Helena, Leto was heir to a legacy spanning 26 generations, Yet, his journey would take him far beyond the confines of his ancestral home. From a young age, Leto's path was intertwined with those of his closest companions, Prince Romber Vernius and his sister Kylia, members of the Great House Vernius, who lived on planet Ix in the Alkalorops star system. Their bond, forged on the sands of distant worlds, would weather storms of rebellion and betrayal, but it was Leto's father, Duke Paulus, whose shadow loomed largest over his life. A master of bullfighting, Duke Paulus was a symbol of strength and honor on Caledon. Yet, his tragic demise shattered the illusions of peace and stability for young Leto. Duke Paulus was killed by a drugged Salozan bull during a bullfighting event. Leto later discovered his mother's involvement in the incident and exiled her as punishment. Leto's heart bore the weight of his father's memory, a constant reminder of the fragility of power and the depths of betrayal. In the aftermath of his father's death, Leto faced choices that would shape the destiny of House Atreides. His union with Kylia bore fruit in the form of a son, Victor, yet their love wilted in the face of political intrigue and personal ambition. It was Jessica, a woman of mystery and secrets, who captured Leto's heart. Upon joining the Atreides household, Jessica was granted the esteemed title of lady. Tasked by the Bene Gesserit, her mission was clear, to conceive a daughter who would later wed the Harkonnen heir, thus aiming to quell the long-standing feud between the two great houses and pave the way for the prophesied Kwisatz Haderach. However, Jessica fell deeply in love with Leto defying her orders and bearing him a son, Paul. Yet, the very qualities that endeared Jessica to Leto would later become a burden, spelling unforeseen challenges for them both. Although Leto fell in love with Jessica, and she bore him his beloved son, he never married her. His decision wasn't rooted in snobbery. Rather, it stemmed from his keen political instincts. Leto had garnered a favorable reputation among the other great houses, and had become highly esteemed within the Landsrad. The Landsrad, established long preceding the Butlerian Jihad, emerged as a significant governing entity during the nascent era of the Carino Empire, representing all the great houses. Remaining unmarried, Leto ensured that House Atreides remained receptive to political alliances with other houses. Given the deep-seated animosity between House Atreides and House Harkonnen, Maintaining openness and appearing amenable to alliances was deemed a significant strategic advantage. This adept political maneuvering sparked jealousy from the emperor. Shaddam Carino IV perceived Leto as a threat and opted to exploit the long-standing feud between House Harkonnen and House Atreides to eliminate the troublesome duke and dismantle House Atreides entirely. As Leto ascended to the mantle of leadership, 
his enemies gathered like storm clouds on the horizon. The feud with House Harkonnen simmered beneath the surface, a cauldron of resentment waiting to boil over. The feud between House Harkonnen and Atreides can be traced back to the Battle of Corin, which took place over 10,000 years before the events of the original novel. After nearly 20 years of governance alongside Lady Jessica on Caledon, Duke Leto received a mandate from the Emperor to assume control of the vital planet Arrakis from House Harkonnen. Relocating his house from Caladan to the treacherous sands of Dune was a monumental task, for Arrakis was both notorious for its challenges and indispensable as the sole source of the valuable spice melange. Despite the inherent dangers and the envy it stirred among his peers in the great houses, Leto saw an opportunity to elevate his status in the Landsrad. Leto's determination is reignited when he receives a letter from the Emperor upon his arrival on Arrakis. Addressed to him as the Noble Duke, the letter promises House Carino's unwavering support for Leto to establish and maintain the rule of the Fofferluches. However, this seemingly supportive gesture exposes Carino's deceit, as it becomes clear that Shaddam IV is simultaneously scheming Leto's downfall. Despite initial challenges, Leto swiftly endeared himself to the people of Dune with his fairness, political acumen, and charm, garnering support from various sectors of Arakeen society. His approach earned him widespread support spanning from the fiercely independent Fremen to the esteemed Noble Houses Minor. However, despite Leto's promising beginnings, his tenure on Dune was abruptly disrupted when the Emperor sanctioned Baron Vladimir Harkonnen's assault on House Atreides, even furnishing the treacherous Baron with his elite Sardaukar forces. Tragically, Leto's fate was sealed when his trusted Suck Doctor, Wellington Yue, betrayed him to the Harkonnens. Though Yue facilitated an attempt on Baron Harkonnen's life, it ultimately led to Leto's demise leaving his son Paul to reclaim his remains from Arakeen sands. Leto's legacy endured through Paul and his grandson Leto II, who inherited his memories through the other memory. His love for the noble knight Duncan Idaho inspired Leto II to preserve a series of Idaho golas throughout his reign. Leto's memory became revered, with millions making pilgrimages to his shrine viewing him as the epitome of Atreides' virtues, courage, integrity, loyalty, justice, and honor. And even though his journey may have ended, his legacy would live on in the hearts of those who dared to dream of a brighter future. And that's where we wrap up this episode. Whether you're a seasoned fan or new to the world we've explored today, I love sharing these stories with you. Rest assured, there's plenty more Duneverse lore to explore, so don't forget to hit that like button and follow us to stay updated on future content. Until then, keep your curiosity alive and your imagination soaring. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.